Hold on, stop. <laughs> Welcome back to the shit show 2.0. Okay, boomer. Damn millennials. Wow. <laughs> Did not know that. Even flirters who who are obviously mentally ill. Oh, this is gonna go downhill real quick. <laughs> is going on and welcome to take on the rules with my man man my man today maybe tomorrow i'll be a woman <laughs> <laughs> you make somebody a lucky bride my name's jun tao <laughs> what are you japanese asian american asian american woman <laughs> <laughs> jun tao wasn't that the chick who was uh in uh, rush hour? Oh, God. Uh, wasn't that the, the list of Juntao? I don't know. One of my friends called me that when I was in high school. Just called me Juntao. Anyway, you just make it shit up. No, I think Juntao was the uh, one. Of, I think he was the the bad guy in, in rush hour. Okay. <laughs> the guy with the, the the Asian guy with the blonde hair. Yeah, I think his name was Juntao. Juntao. <clears throat> anyway, John's Japanese today, and as always, Mike D is here. We are at Lexiless. The uh, resident millennial is not here today with us. She had to work, so. Resident millennials work? If she does. <laughs> she doesn't do nothing here, but she does a whole lot at work. <laughs> uh, so we're sitting here, and uh, what's been going on since last we met, my friend? <clears throat> uh, just grinding it out day by day. Working hard every day. Why are you laughing so hard? Uh, You're laughing as hard as you work. This coronavirus got everybody fucked up. Did they offer you the shot? Shit! Oh my god, I was supposed to go today for my shot. And you didn't go? I totally forgot about it. <laughs> Crap! I No, I really wanted to go. Son of a bitch. I think it was a Johnson & Johnson shot, it too. It was, yeah. Because if if I get one, that would be the one that I get. I'm not. Now, I've been told some people, oh, you shouldn't have got that one. You should have went for the Moderna. Well, I said, oh, you guys got all sick from the Moderna. Yeah, yeah. but that, that's 98% effective. Johnson Johnson's only 58% effective. Yeah, okay. I still have antibody, so I'm good. So, Actually, you know what this, this week is? National Siblings Day? No. Well, this today is National Siblings Day. So I say hi to my sister, Michelle, my other sister, Leslie. Hi, Jenny and Melissa. And, and uh, Rebecca, my uh, brother Bobby, and my deceased brother Ryan. Um, no, this week is my one year anniversary. For what being gay? No, one year ago I was in the hospital with Corona. Oh, <laughs> and and you were, you were getting two weeks vacation paid. That's of right, <laughs> yeah, baby. How's that work? That wasn't even that fun. I just stayed at home and. Like sprayed everything down with bleach, and <laughs> the only place you could go is the grocery store. Actually, people drop groceries off here for us. We didn't have to go anywhere. And I, I would go to the grocery store to just for fun. I don't know if I told you this, but the, the warden, she called. Yeah, she that, told me she was going to, and she called me and told, she told me she just got off the phone with you, and and she said, "If you need groceries, I'll drop and stop. I'll stop and drop groceries." Eh, I don't know. That's that's cool. All right, let me get a couple of bags of those gel apple slices. <laughs> Not that kind of groceries, man. That, those are groceries. <laughs> Not groceries. Get those uh, oranges that you can't peel. <laughs> Low bit, bro. Anyway. That's a struggle snack. Well, it makes you work for it, bro. <laughs> exactly. He's struggling to open we're, that we're some calories while you open that orange up. <laughs> I went to just throw them the fuck away. Just be like me and don't eat fruit. No, oh, I couldn't do that. I know. You love fruit. Uh, in fact, you know what? I got a watermelon in the back of my car. Right now? Right now. I forgot to eat it. I got it last week. Let's so go put some vodka in it, bro. We're probably going to have to shoot it. I don't know if it's going to... I don't think it's good anymore. Oh, we could shoot it. I said we fucking... We'll put that 9 millimeter to test. Yeah. Your new one? You yeah. shot that one yet? Yeah. Well, I was down in West Virginia. West Virginia. Well, my family tree looks like a stump. That's my uh, my Trump gun. Trump gun. Did you get a Biden gun? No, we're getting a Biden blower. 
<laughs> we're getting a Biden snowblower. Uh, That's what we do with our stimulus. The, the ammo situation right now is hard. Oh, and you know what? Nathan's on the uh, high school trap team. Can they even get ammo? Uh, it's like 63 cents a, a shell for shotgun. Jesus Christ. Like, I remember when you get a box like of shotgun 63 shell. 63 cents a box. Yeah. Well, it was $5 a box. Yeah. I remember when I was like 18, we used to go to the Army Navy store in Reading. And it was, you could buy, well, I, uh, my buddy had an AK, so I went in there. This guy I, you know. This guy I know. Sky blue. I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> a 20 round box of AK ammo was $1.99. Ugh. And we thought that was high because it was at the Army Navy store. Right. So you could probably get it for like a dollar, dollar fifty, like somewhere else. I have someplace little cardboard boxes with two, two, three ammo in them. Yeah. They're just, it's just like a little box like this. I think it's like twenty five rounds in each box. Yeah. And and they were like four bucks, three bucks. Yeah. Now it's like a buck around. Yeah, buck around, even more than that. Yeah. Ridiculous. Crazy. Fuck Corona. So, um, our topic today is movies and TV shows that could never be made today that we have enjoyed in the past. That made us who we are. Right. So, I felt where I, I, I wish, I wish I had it. I found a, an awesome quote and it's, it was. I, I gotta see if I can find it. All right. Do you ever see that uh, that meme? It's like that little kid drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette. Yes. And he's got a beer tipped uh, up like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, my my generation is the last generation to drink all hose. You, <laughs> before all you pussies took over. Yeah. I don't even know where I had that quote. We're just gonna bash you. I don't know. I don't know what you want to call. It. Like, why is everybody so butthurt nowadays? About everything. Oh my god, you can't say that. Oh, well, guess what I just did. You know what I'm going to link in there with that? Here's a perfect example. I'm going to go a little off script here. No. All, your, all your lists? No, you can't go off script. We never do that. Karate Kid. He might be. It might be on there. Because but of the bullying? Johnny Lawrence? No, I know they just did make the new one, but goes in a whole different like Johnny Lawrence was a prick yes yeah and he straight up that was all oh my god we can't but show that how honestly dare... in school who didn't know a kid that was like that exactly and how do you deal with a bully you beat the shit out of him exactly do they teach that anymore nowadays I taught my son that I taught my daughter that although the, the school frowned upon it if it was to school when, when I, I told care. when I, I told the school that my I said I, I'm gonna tell you what you guys don't stop this kid from picking on him I told my son, just pop him in the mouth. He yeah. goes, oh, we can't condone violence. I said, I can't condone my son being tortured yeah. by some some kid who's got emotional problems. Right. If you can't control it, we'll control it. Yeah. I said, I'll go to his house and I'll beat the shit out of his dad, see how he likes being bullied. <laughs> and I told my daughter, I said, you know, I don't care what kind of trouble you get into. You'll never be in trouble with me. If you, I told my son, I told my son and my daughter, and I, my daughter was actually better because when she was being picked on, I said, here's what you do. You step to the kid. She goes, what if he hits me? I said, two things are going to happen. Either you're going to kick his butt, and forever, until the day he graduates, he's going to be the kid who got his ass kicked by a girl, or he's going to hit you, and forever, until he graduates, and forever, he will be the kid who beat up a girl. Either way, it's a lose-lose for him. Yeah. So, you know, you just, you tell him that. Look, if I take a swing on you, what are you going to do? And if he's just, well, sweet, I'll hit you back. And then, well, forever you're going to be the guy who beat up a girl. Yeah. And if I knock you down, forever you're going to be the guy. Lose, lose for you, bro. But I told my son the same thing you told your daughter. If the school calls me and you are defending somebody from being picked on or defending yourself from being picked on, you will face no punishment in my house. Mm-hmm. Yep. But if you are bullying someone, yeah, you're going to hope that that school says you can't go home because I will whoop your ass. Yeah. I won't have it. So here's that quote. So this is Marcus Tullius Cicero. This is over 2,000 years ago. Okay. And he was around the time of um, Caesar being killed by Anthony. Anthony? Anthony. (laughs) 
To be ignorant of what occurred before you were born is to remain always a child. Say it one more time. To be ignorant of what occurred before you were born is to remain always a child. So if, if you deny the past or you don't learn the past, you, you, you can yourself. never grow as a person. Right. I think that's very true. Well, yeah. And, and with, with now, we don't do politics. You're and, just stuck in your own little world. And, and we're not trying to do politics on this one. But common sense is if you erase <clears> the past, <throat> you cannot learn from it. And and that's that's all I'm going to say on that topic. I would think in my in my head, I think that this shit is nothing new. This has been happening since the dawn of man. Oh, I'm sorry, I said man, the dawn of humankind. <sighs> dawn of inmates. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, okay. We'll we'll step. We'll we'll touch on that one. I mean, we'll 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 sensitively handle that when so, we get to it. So this topic for us, with the, the shows that can't be made now, actually came up from our our Hollywood Sucks conversation. Oh, before we hit that, I just wanted to tell you about that movie that I watched yesterday. And I think you would like this. Uh, it was on Amazon Prime. It was called Unhinged. And I think I might have seen that. Russell Crowe. I, I think I might have seen that. And I guess he gets divorced and he goes ballistic. And then it's about road rage. And it just makes me want to carry a gun in my car at all times. Oh, I, I do. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't for a while. And I've been meaning to do that. But that's a different subject. But yeah, he it was actually, shockingly, it was fucking good. It was a different subject. It wasn't a whole lot of explosions and blow. It was just, I'm I'm there. I'm in your face. But see, now, even though it was a different thing, it's sort of like falling down with Michael Douglas. I didn't see that one. It's not the same movie. They they could have done falling down too and made that movie, but they didn't. They made an original movie, which is what I'm saying with with Hollywood. They yeah. need to do that. Yeah, you, know, you can use the same topic matter, but just do it different and not try to attach Although, yourself to something else what i wanted to tell i think you never saw the movie falling down no oh you gotta watch that i think um i think they remade tombstone what yes and it was something like that i'm like i'm thinking to myself i'm like no this is the only way i can justify this is tombstone to me <laughs> will always be val kilmer kurt russell yes uh sam elliott sam elliott um oh come on What's the other guy? Uh, oh, he died tragically um, when he was in surgery. He was in Weird Science. Bill. He's been in a bunch of shit. Bill Bateman? Oh, God. I can't remember his name. But that movie. Well, see, that movie also has a special place in our heart. because. Right. <laughs> but I even, I even watched that way before I knew Marty. And I oh, I did too. I've watched it a hundred times, and that's what made Marty quoting yeah. <laughs> the movie all day. Yeah. That's what made it so much better because I knew all the quotes, and he's he knows we've <laughs> we've all seen it. And when he started quoting it, we would start quoting it, and it was just it was just one of those things where it made the workday go so much quicker. Oh, yeah. Even though it would get frustrating, like every time you turn around, Marty would be throwing out another quote. Not, but I didn't he care. Didn't always do it. Well, when he got, if you started him first thing in the going. morning, if you said Tombstone at six or seven thirty a.m., he was doing Tombstone until three thirty, <laughs> and I love him for it, every second of it. But um, <clears throat> yeah, that, that, that exactly. We Bill we, Paxton, we, no Bill Paxton, he died. Yeah, he died in surgery. I didn't know that. Michael Bain, Powers Booth. A lot of great actors in that movie. Yeah, I, um, I can't figure out who he is. I have to watch the movie again, but Frank Stallone was in the movie. Frank Stallone was in the movie? Yeah. Yeah, he's credited in the movie. He, he had to be one of the red legs. No, I think he was like a sheriff in the beginning or something. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, we, me and Deb actually went to the movies last night. Stephen for the... Lang, Billy Bob Thornton. Oh, that's right. Billy Bob Thornton. I forgot about him. Michael Rooker, Jason Priestley. 
So me and Deb actually went to the movies last night for the first time, and Billy Zane. Billy Zane was in it. Yeah, he was the uh, eccentric uh, guy who was in the plays and the, the shows, doing the, the theater with the girl that Wyatt Earp. Isn't Billy Zane black? No, he was right there. Bald what? guy. Billy Zane. Hey, top right, I top left. Was, I thought he was black. No. Frank Stallone. He's Ed Bailey. Who the hell am I thinking of? Wasn't Billy Zane like a karate guy? <laughs> I'm thinking of Billy Blank. <laughs> Billy Blank? The <laughs> Tebow guy? Yeah, that's him. Don't stop. Don't stop. I need. He was in that commercial. Yeah, he was in yeah, that yeah. commercial. Billy Blank. <laughs> Billy Blank. <laughs> but what if I get married and I decide to jab all night long? <laughs> oh, that was good stuff. So we went and saw The Unholy last night, mm-hmm. which was a decent movie. I'll tell you what. I not, didn't even know anything was in the movie theaters right now. I didn't either, but Deb saw this movie. She saw the preview for this movie someplace. Nathan's been talking about going with his friends, and she goes, I really want to see that movie. Let's go. And I'm like, okay. So, like, I wasn't really, 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 really into it because, number one, I hate people. Number two. People always seem to ruin the movies for you. I didn't know what the movie was about. Number three, I'm watching what I'm eating. So, <laughs> no popcorn. No th- 5,000 calorie popcorn for me. So Just Pretzel bites with cheese. Oh, dude, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I made us something healthy for podcast fuel today, too. <laughs> so, we go watch this movie, and there's not many movies that'll do this. I actually jumped twice during this movie. Like, it got me twice. Now, Deb jumped like 55 times. <laughs> But it, it got me twice. Like, what was this called? The Unholy. All right. It, uh, it's worth a watch, bro. It really is. And the mm-hmm. reason I like it, it was... The, it, there's a theme to the movie, that, and I've seen this theme in other movies. But it was a standalone movie that it, it had enough suspense. You, you could figure it out. It wasn't, it wasn't too complicated. But it, it, it came off... And they did it pretty well, I thought. Right. For for a suspenseful horror movie. Well, that movie that when uh, Ben and Harlan came up. Yeah. That we watched about Saipan. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know this, but me and Mike were in Saipan together. Really? Yeah. That episode drops. What time is it? It dropped 25 minutes ago, so <laughs> check it out. Sweet. Link below. <laughs> uh, but, like, right, right away, like, I was like, I figured it out too, like ten minutes into the movie, and like you're watching, you're like ten minutes into the movie, like oh, I'm already dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that movie was very very poorly made. Yeah, oh, I, I watched the. I did enjoy it though. Too. I did enjoy it though. Like it, it, yeah, because the begin like you had to because of the beginning it was like it was shot on Saipan. Like oh, we were there. Like right to the left of that is this. Yeah, what yeah. if that bunker's really there? We, we should go back and find yeah. it. <laughs> But, uh, I'm gonna show you this picture that I put together for the. I still have the. Ah, uh, oh, I love it. You gotta send me that. I love that picture. That's a great picture. You see that two 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 lines going across your chest? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> it's this light <laughs> above us. It was reflected off the camera. That you gotta send me that picture. Right there, you see it. What? What? That's not a reflection. <laughs> That's a reflection of that light. That's a, those are dotted lines, Mike. Look at the dot, look at the light above you. They're dotted. It's LED light. Oh, okay. That's exactly what it is, bro. It took me forever to figure that out, though. And this what one. What the hell? But, uh, what, I think I'm wearing the same exact thing that I wore last time. I think you did. You are, too. You probably never changed, you stinky bastard. I didn't take a shower today. See, I like that mission Saipan. You were in the same shirt. <laughs> this is my podcast shirt. <laughs> Got you made Katie on it. That's how this shit started. Anyway. <coughs> so back to the cancel culture. Yeah, damn stupid cancel culture. You suck my dick. Well, I, I'm just not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of canceling things that you don't like. No, not a fan of... Can- oh, we're going to cancel the name of a school because their last name is Jefferson. Really? I hearken back to 
you, you like the um, Minor Threat? Oh, yeah, I love Minor Threat. Guilty of being white. Yeah. I just heard that song the other day. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, this has been a problem forever. But, yeah, like, we'll, we'll say that. Like, it's not my fault. I was like, I did not name the school Jefferson, the name school Jefferson, whatever, Jefferson Heights. Oh, just because it says the last name, you think it has oh, tearing down statues. I, I don't know what to think, man. Look, I, I, I can kind of see the other side, why you have a statue honoring someone who did some horrible things. But they're not really statues honoring people. They're monuments of history. Right. And when you start, when you start taking that away, like if like when I took uh, Lexi to the Holocaust Museum when she was okay when when Lexi was young, I wish she was here to talk about this because she was really impressed. Like she was really impressionable of the Holocaust. Uh, she went overseas to play soccer in Austria, and while she was there, she visited a concentration camp, mm -hmm. and it was a surreal thing. Like it made that whole thing real for her. Right. What happened in those camps was despicable and disgusting. Absolutely. And nobody, I don't, well, there's not many people who deny, there's some idiots out there that deny that shit, but you know, whatever, cancel those people. Don't cancel. So you're going to tear down that concentration camp because you don't like what happened there. Yeah. I don't like what happened there. Something evil happened there. But for Lexi, when she went, it was surreal. It made it, 100% real to her right. and she when she came home when we go down to Bethesda to the hospital down there for, for Deb uh, we, we, we'd we take the kids with us we'd make because we were down there for most of the week and we'd try to make it fun for them so it wasn't mom going to the hospital it was us going to D.C. and visiting the capital and we'd always each one of the kids would pick a museum we'd go to that so Nathan of course picked the, the Space and Science Museum um I picked every museum because I, I love going to that shit. And Lexi, when we went down, she was like 13, and she said, I want to go to the Holocaust Museum. And I'm like, Lex, you know, that's that's a really kind of adult place to go. Like, are you sure that's where you want to go? Because it was her time to pick, and we'll go wherever she picks. I just want to make sure that she understands it. And she goes, Dad, well, I was in the camp. Right. I, I've seen these places. She where it actually happened. So... Um, around that same time, the guy from Baldwin Brass, the the owner, uh, had written a book, and he he wrote about his time in Nazi Germany a, as a Jewish man, and he was a child or young, and being separated from his family, and he he, he wrote his story, and Lexi also said to me, so when I want I want to go up and see this this he's going to read some passages from the book, and so it was up in Pottsville, I'm like Lexi, you sure? Because that's like so this frail old man with his number tattoo on his arm is telling these did you do you want to cancel that because you don't like what happened? No. You you want people to remember that what what took place there. So it's never repeated again. Right. So so nobody will ever stand up and say, Well, I guess, you know, it's not that bad. Whatever. So this guy told his story and I'm gonna tell you something. After it was over. I went up and I purchased the book and I went up to have him sign it. And I said, I got to tell you something, dude. I just need to give you a hug. And I gave this very old man one of my big bear hugs and, and just said, God bless you, bro. Like, nobody should have to go through life what, what you've gone through. But the fact that you did it, overcame it, and succeeded is a testament to you as a person. Absolutely. And I think that's what's missed with all this cancel culture and, and, you know, we're going to be talking about these movies and, and TV shows that if they were being made today, they'd be canceled. They did call advertisers and they did, don't advertise in that program because it, it has content that we don't like. But Here, here's one that I want to see. I want to see the slavery and freedom national museum of, oh, hold on. My phone's all slow. I saw this on, uh, I forget what I saw it on. At my sister's house when I was living there on on TV, um, oh gosh, this is like off the, the off the cuff right here. 
So I don't have any information about it other than what I'm trying to look up right now. So you don't know what it's about? See, no, <laughs> yeah. shut up. <laughs> You don't know what it's about. You don't know who's well, in it. Well, I wanted to list the artist who made the stuff for it, but it looks... I really want to go there. And But it's like, okay, so... I'd make a trip there with you, bro. Yeah. I'd uh, do it. Uh, Deb it, would go. It looks really powerful, like, you know, depressing, but you need to see that. You need to experience that. Right. Because What's, it happened in, our, in, our, in, in, it happened in this country. When we went to the, the Holocaust Museum, just before we went and just afterward, there's two bomb scares there. Yeah. And uh, you go in and they, they have this, um, I, I'm going to say Jacob. I don't know if it's Jacob. There's Jacob's tale. It's a tale of a child who went through the Holocaust. Okay. And I don't know if he's fictional or non-fictional or, or what the deal is. And maybe they were just doing it so they could gear more towards children. But, dude, I almost left there in tears. I bet, yeah. And well, actually, at some points, I had to, I had to go to the bathroom and wash my face, and then it's just, and and, and you know, Lexi kind of took it in stride because she had been exposed to the sites where this happened, right? And I think that gives her a better understanding of history, and and seeing as although you know, Lexi politically is is polar to me, um, we don't see things the same way. And that's okay. I don't cancel my daughter for that. She doesn't cancel me. Right. Uh, you can't do that. We you choose not to talk. To we choose not to talk about side. politics a lot. Yeah. But, uh, but she can see where I'm coming from, and she can see to an extent, like, you know, if you if you did the slippery slope, which is what happens when you 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 you, you shut this stuff down. Right, and I think like a lot of problems is like if you try and tell your side. You get labeled as a racist or a sexist or this and that. And that's not true. It's just well, the, the easiest thing to do. The, 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 the fact is, is nobody wants to be called racist. No. And, and when, and, and if they want to shut down somebody, if they want to uh, denounce something they've said, the, the, the best thing to do is label them a racist, ra- label them a bigot, label them a homophobe, sexist, sexist, whatever. Because that's the worst thing you call somebody. But the, the fact is, is just because I hold an opinion slightly different to you doesn't mean I'm right. racist or, right. or bigoted or homophobic. It just mm-hmm. means I hold a different opinion. And, and I, I used to say that every part of society wants things to get better. They just see a different path to get there. And, yeah, you're right. And, and the fact is, is the, the cancel culture now it's my way or the highway. So people rail against fascism, and they should, but they do it in a fascist manner. <laughs> right. Which is, is, is just as wrong, in, in my opinion. And <clears throat> just like the, the first movie that, that comes to mind when I think of this is Blazing Saddles. You could never make that movie now. No. Oh, absolutely not. No. Almost any Mel Brooks movie. Yeah, you, you you couldn't because there's so many topics in there. But the the fact is, is is he macked on everybody in that movie, right? He macked on Nazis. He he macked on blacks. He macked on Mexicans. He macked on white people, old people, young people. He Mexicans. Did, yeah, everything. Yeah, you know when they're standing in line and they were doing the the KKK check. And he's, he's like trying to rub the black off his hand. Oh, I got some cold dust on me. Like, <laughs> or when when the dude says, uh, uh, you know, sing us some songs. You know, you people sing songs. Well, that's very racist. Was that where they had the, uh, uh, or yeah, even Mac on uh, freaking like hillbillies where they're eating the the chili? Yeah, and <laughs> they're making fun of white people. Yeah, like. But that doesn't make like it doesn't comedy make, doesn't make you a racist. No, I, that's, I, I just feel like like we all need a good laugh. Like it's, if you can, if I could pick out your you know stereotypical things that you do, you like know, eat a lot, eat a lot. <laughs> okay, we're both fat. We get it. But you know we take it in good nature. But I I don't see. Here's how I looked at look. I look at this. If you allow yourself to be, if I say something to you. And you allow yourself to be offended by that. 
You know how much power that gives me? Right. Over you. Yeah. You're giving that power to somebody else. Yeah. Don't give that power to anybody else. Don't ever give that power like to anybody there's, else. If, if our society was like this, uh, oh God, <laughs> I really shouldn't be fucking doing this. I'm too stupid for this fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> trying, I'm trying to like be all poetic here, and I can't. But I just—it makes you a pussy if you can't if you don't have a thick skin. That's like, poetic. I, <laughs> like, when I first joined Corrections, it's either fucking sink or swim. Like, oh, if yeah. you don't have a thick skin, no, you're gonna fucking you're gonna crash and burn. And and, and maybe that's why we see things differently than other people. And I'm sure that is why we see. Because Mike, I think we're just old school. What you and I have been called every name in the book. Yeah. We've literally had shit and piss thrown at us. Absolutely, yep. And you go through the day, and it is what it is. Is it stressful? Yeah. But I don't let... I think it makes you a stronger person. I don't let it eat me up. I don't give someone else that power. I, like, I just remember my dad telling me, you know, back to my dad and mom, like, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Like, nobody's going to sit here and hold your hand through this. Well, it's, they Life's say. It's not easy. They say it's racist now to say, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, which is one of the themes in Blazing Saddles. But you know? how, I don't understand how that's racist. Well, of course it is, because I don't like it. I mean, it. <laughs> but, like, um, uh, the TV show, um, even married with children, do you think they could make that now? Hell no. That's so, like, sexist and That's or what you would label sexist. Oh, yes. And Misogynistic. When, 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 he's, when he's always uh, burning on uh, the neighbor, who said the, the skinny little blonde. The, 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 uh, the bisexual neighbor. Uh, yeah. No, uh, Marcy. Marcy uh, Darcy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had small boobs and, yeah. you know, all kinds of stuff. Well, he, he was a woman, woman shoe salesman. How about that when he had that whole bit about making fun of fat girls? Yeah. He's like, oh. He says, uh, I wish I had a, a full tank of gas. And he goes, what did the lady say to him? He goes, I'd say it to your face. He's like, but my car only has a half a tank of gas. <laughs> um, a lot of the Monty Python stuff. She's like, I, I dislike you, sir. She's like, well, I bet you wouldn't if I came with a Diet Coke and a side of fries. <laughs> dude, that, and that's funny. That's freaking classic, man. And, like, come and on. Dude, dude, I'm fat. <laughs> Just because she's a woman, I mean, I, I, we might have to cut this part out. No, we're not cutting nothing out. But I said it. this before. Like, women, you want to stand up in our realm. You want to fucking be, you want to go toe-to-toe. You got to be able to have a thick skin. And I believe there's women out there that absolutely agree with that and do have a thick skin and would give it right back, probably even better. I know a lot of women who would. And (laughs) some people, I just, I hate those pussies. Like, you can't say that. Well, I just did. What are you going to do? That's offensive. Well, yeah. Okay. I don't care what you think. It uh, it might be offensive. Uh, I'm okay. Get over it. Okay with it. What are you going to lay down and cry, pussy? Or are you going to fucking stand up and fight for yourself? See, I wish Lexi was here for this just to get her perspective. Because she's a millennial. Yeah. And, eh, you know, millennials are part of this whole cancel culture shit. Yeah, but I don't, I don't feel but she's like that. I don't that. think she's like that. No, absolutely. I can tell. I know she's not like I, that. I, well, I know she doesn't like the fact that they want to shut people down. Like, she'll, she'll not talk to people because they're offensive. But she doesn't shut them down. Like, they, they literally want to take people's means of uh, earning money away from them means of supporting their family with them just because they don't agree with what they're saying. Yeah. So, like, every single frickin' uh, James Bond film. Oh, yeah. We talked about this last time. Yeah. How misogynistic is James Bond? Right. Yeah. And that, you know what? I'm sorry. That's just the way it was back then. Well, you can't hold people to a standard now. Or, like, who you can't hold people. That? You can't hold people from 1950. Right. To a standard that you're holding now. Like, if you ask my grandfather what a Brazil nut was called, he's not going to say Brazil nut. Oh, no, I I know. I'm not going to say the name of it now. But it's not something I would say regardless, but my grandfather was the same way. Yeah, it's just, it was a cultural thing. It doesn't mean that he hates black people. And I'm sure, like, you know, I'm sure we all, white people, have just as many derogatory names as 
as any other culture. Like gringo, cracker, you know? I was just thinking about what, that the other day. If, if, if my white ass were to walk down somewhere in Mexico, I'm probably going to get stabbed to death or kidnapped or... But this, is, this Mexico doesn't matter. It's not America. I'm just saying it's it's a culture. Well, they they don't they don't have people who are cancel culture people down there. Just uh, uh, racism is is not just an American problem. No, no, it's not. No, you know what? Back back in the day. Uh, Wait, hold on, Mike. I think we need an inter- intermission here. <laughs> Should I sing Blue Christmas? <laughs> Pause. You grab a beer while you're over there. Here. Dude, you're asking your dick connected? Oh, did, did he have you in a water pill too? That's why. That's why you're pissing so much. I know you didn't feel the cold water. <laughs> oh, hey, Deb. <laughs> well, even you'll... Oh, wait till you sit down. In living color. Yeah. I smoothed you. Hmm? I told you you should have ate before we started. We'll, eat, we'll eat between. I was hungry. First start. I hope you like that shit, bro. I think I will. Okay. We'll be back. So, um, what were we talking about? We were talking about uh, in living color. Well, that was one I, I watched uh, today. Uh, the in living color, where they had the Asian woman. Oh yeah, like the stereotypical like, and they actually said they they. Uh, what about Homie the Clown? Homie the Clown. They got her character from. God bless you. Oh, here we go. Oh, God bless you. Oh, God. Or as Elaine Bettis would say, you're so good looking. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. um, Yeah, Homie the Clown is is offensive. But it's it's a joke. And I used to love Homie the Clown. Homie, don't play that. I still love Homie the Clown. (laughs) Homie, don't play that. (laughs) Fucking hit you over the head with a sock of fucking nickels. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's a funny shit. But like I, I, I couldn't. I don't know how anybody could be a comedian today. Yeah, it, if you you ever hear uh, Ralphie May? Yes. Oh my know, god, dude! But he is. If but, you want to get butt hurt, he is unapologetically offensive. Yeah. Uh, what's the other guy? Gary Smith, I think. Gary something. I just I just watch a dude, V V, Von K, or something like that. He just ripped apart uh, Rapino, the soccer player. From, said she wouldn't go oh, to the White yeah. House, and oh, yeah. and and she then she gave a speech about all the people who treaded these halls before me. Well, yeah, Trump did. <laughs> like, oh, like I you hated him. It. I don't. I don't get it. I don't know what I would wish these people. What do you want? What What do you want? What, like Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom? 
they were making fun of Indian. Yes, they were. Society. Uh, uh, what was the little kid's name? Round Eye? Or yeah, no. Uh, short, short, short uh, round. No. That was his name. Damn it. No, Round Eye was, what the hell was that? That was some Kung Fu movie. They were calling all the all the white people round eyes. Quilo. Quilo. That means like white person. Yeah. Short round was his his name in the the thing. Short round. But he would say round eye all the time. Okay, round eye. I don't get short round though. But that's his name. Wait a minute. Click on that picture there. Is that the guy from um? That's the guy from Indiana Jones. I know that, but okay. No, I thought he would look like a guy from a show I watched years ago. Right there, short round. Short round. Anyway, I I just don't know where we're going with all this. Like you know. It, it just wherever I've been, like my grandfather had a nickname for everyone. Like my sister dated a Spanish guy; he called him Pancho. He wasn't Mexican; he was Puerto Rican. And he called me Reverend John. He called my sister, uh, my sister Jenny, uh, sister, sister. Oh fuck! What the hell was it? Uh, it was some kind of like joke on her because she was like super skinny, and we used to call her Ethiopian baby. But then I forget what my other sister was called. No, I, I was just he had a nickname for everyone. Well, there used to be a guy who worked at the jail. He worked. Call fat guy Slim. Um, he worked out in the CRC when it was the trailers, and. uh he was telling me a story about his daughter's son and his it would have been a, the, 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 the son's great great grandfather so her grandmother <clears throat> when they would come over for uh, like holidays because the daughter now there was a Jewish family when the, the, and the, the daughter married a German guy when they would bring the baby over, the, the child, the grandmother would call the kid a little Nazi. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little sense of humor. Uh, that's offensive. I think it's a horrible thing to say to a kid. <laughs> but the, the fact is, is in the family, it was kind of like a joke. It wasn't, they didn't find it offensive, so why should I? Like, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't. it doesn't affect me. And that's always been one, like, what you do doesn't affect me, so I don't give a shit. When it affects me, then I care. Or Where's that old adage? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah. Remember that? I used, yeah. to, we used to say that all the time. Can't say that anymore. It's offensive. <laughs> I always just like they, when they changed the... It's offensive uh, the bones. <laughs> <laughs> they changed the Washington Redskins. We'll oh. have to bleep that out. The Washington Redskins. <laughs> What well, here's the thing. They changed the Washington Redskins, but you still have the Cleveland Indians. Yep. And you still have the Chicago Blackhawks. Mm-hmm. Isn't there uh, a, a Canadian team, too, that, that has a, a, a reference to a, a native well, I know, culture? I know the Canucks. No, you can't say that. The Canadians, not Canucks. Um. Back to the movies, like True Lies, they they, they criticize for prejudice against Muslims. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know what I mean about True Lies? Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis doing a strip tease. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, well, I have uh, Blazing Saddles is listed there. Like, where do you even start with that one? Yeah. Like, where do you start? Like, how about um, um, South Park? South Park is, but I think they, they they had to dumb it down. They literally have tried for twenty years to get thrown off the air, and haven't managed, haven't done yet. No, no, I'm sorry. I think Family Guy dumbed it down. Yeah, and the Family Guy is another one. 
like I'm surprised he hasn't. They, but I don't know which one's worse, Family Guy or I, I both. I love them both. I don't watch either one of them. You know why? I don't really find them funny. Oh my god! I, because there's some stuff in it I find offensive, but I don't want. I don't want them off the air. I don't want to shut them down. I've never I laughed so watch hard them. watching like the earlier Family Guys. Just <laughs> now, I've watched some of them. Some of the stuff's funny. Some I, I like. I get some of the jokes. Some of the stuff I just don't like. I don't. There's some comedians I'll, I'll sit through. People will be laughing their ass off, and I'm like, eh, "This is not funny." Yeah, I don't. Know. Ralphie May, though, like, but it doesn't mean that they do, they don't deserve no to be canceled. They 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 deserve a forum to do their thing, and the market itself should be enough. But what the cancel culture tries to do is shut them down completely by saying, "If if you say a joke that I don't like, it's offensive." It's racist, it's bigoted, it's homophobic, it's misogynistic. Well, everything is. What about, um, who's the old, oh, uh, Don, no, not Don, uh, uh, Don Rickles. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Well, I was just saying Rodney Dangerfield. Sam Kennison. Oh, I love Sam Kennison. God now, how would you guys don't know that he was at, uh, uh, he was born into a Christian house. Catholic. He was, Catholic. He, was a, he was a minister. He was a minister, yeah. I saw watching uh, the one where he's, uh, what was it, Back to what was Back it? to School. Back to School. Rodney Dangerfield and Sam Kinison. And uh, Sam Kinison was a teacher, and he's like, Of course you are, I got war. He's the guy's over there, skipping on the rest, but he's shooting Charlie. Uh, uh! <laughs> I like you. <laughs> Like, Andrew Dice Clay, could he be a comedian now? Fuck no. no. Well, they still are, but like, I think but like they had to change everything no, they did because that's bullshit. Like, like I, I remember not. I remember, you know, Jack and Jill went up the hill both with a buck and a quarter. Jill came down with 250. The fucking whore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I remember, like, uh, I remember Sam Kinison's bits, like George Carlin. And George Carlin was, was kind of an activist. He was. He was very political. But he made sense. Yeah, he and did. he hated the cancel culture. Yeah. Even back when he was doing his thing. Uh, the movie Animal House, that's another one. Like, Oh my god, yeah. They basically raped a chick and made a joke of it. She was passed out, drunk, and, and delivered her back to her house. Who hasn't done that? <laughs> but I, I agree with you, Mike. It, just because you don't like what you're seeing doesn't mean that it should be not shown to anybody, right? That's bull. That's like fucking communist shit. There. Well, that's what. That's exactly. It's, it's propaganda. If you look at like a lot of like, uh, we'll take Gigi <clears throat> Allen. You know who that is? No. Old punk rock dude. He's dead. He died years ago in the nineties. But very, very controversial. Well, punk rock in, in itself was controversial, and but punk he, rock he took it to like. The extreme, but punk rock was was meant to stand up against all of that. Exactly, and I think he took that to the extreme and he ran with it. He was very good at it. Like this dude would like. What crap. band was he in? Uh, he was in the Murder Junkies. He had G.G. Allen and the Jabbers. I think he was in like three different bands. Yeah, I don't know any of those bands. And <sighs> trust me, you wouldn't forget him. He would like. Crap on stage and throw it at people. Oh, that's that's and then ridiculous. He would like just bash the mic into his head and like he'd be bloody and he's like naked and he just. But that was even though as as, as offensive in, in, in his lyrics and shit, but that was his art form. He was expressing his fucked up life with his art form. See, and I don't consider that art at all. But uh, do your thing, bro. Yeah. If you throw shit on me, I'm gonna punch you in the mouth. Well, you wouldn't even. I mean, he did, the, the one the one concert. I think like they said, five hundred people showed up, and by the end of the song, he cleared the whole fucking place. Like everybody left because he would just. He well, was right. crazy, but but that that's. I'm good with that. Do your thing, and if people like it, they'll stay. Yeah, but you knew what you were getting into when you went to that concert. It, well, uh, if, you knew. No, if, you knew. If, if we were kids together. And you said, oh, I'm going to really go see this dude. Oh, okay, I'll go. I don't know nothing about it, but I'll go. I think I would. If I got there and someone threw shit at me, I would have been on stage. 
uh, pounding the shit out of him. That's what he wanted. But that's what happened. <laughs> he liked the violence. He wanted to, you know, but, he liked the violence. He liked beating people up, getting beaten up. Do I think he should have done it? No. Do I think I would stop it? No. I just would never go again. I'd never give him my money again. Right, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you could cancel someone just by not giving them your money. You get burned by a stove once. But to stigmatize, like, what they do now is they stigmatize someone so much that if you give them money, you're a, you, you're, you're a racist. Right. Or you're a bigot. Or you're a homophobe. Or just because I didn't like you're it. You're a bad person because I didn't like it. Like, I can't believe you vote Republican. Demo- I feel like, or Democrat. I feel... I guess it works both ways, but I feel that's what some people do, too, without trying to talk politics here. I'm just saying. Either way. There's some people in my life, like, I can't believe you supported that racist. And blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I don't even get into them with them. I'm like, what well, you think what you want to think. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. Because last time I checked, this is a free country. Well, it's supposed to be. Yeah. Probably not soon anymore. What else I got? An all in the family. Remember that one? Mm-hmm. Archie Bunker. And now, uh, Meathead on Archie Bunker was, a, like, in real life is a huge leftist, liberal, nothing wrong with that. But, and he, he was in, he married into a family that was very conservative. And Archie Bunker would say some fucked up shit. Yeah, oh yeah. He, what he called me had uh, he called him Dingbat. <laughs> they call his wife Dingbat all the time. <laughs> like that's offensive, but uh, but it's a show. It's, it's comedy. It's comedy. I'm sorry. I I I like the edgy but, shit. I love. You know, just oh my god, did he say that? Like, oh shit! I love the shit that like makes you feel like uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, right? It's, some people just can't handle that. I know a guy that can't handle that. He just doesn't watch it. With this show, the next one, uh, Dukes of Hazard, they don't even show the reruns anymore because there's a Confederate flag on the car, and that's here, here's here's my thing. Like, you want to fly the Confederate flag? Go ahead. Don't care. But what other country, and and that's this is the greatness of America, would allow you to fly the enemy the enemy flag? In their country. Because the Confederate flag, the the South, was the enemy of the North. Yeah. Well, the North won the war. Well, nobody really won that war, but the North prevailed. And so the, the Confederate flag, the Dixie flag, is the enemy's flag. Why would you want to fly it? But I I don't, I would never stop someone from well, flying here's, it. Here's my I just problem. never had any interest in it. Some people will claim that the Dixie flag is racist. You see that, you automatically think, KKK, oh, you're right. a racist. Because that's what the South, st- well, they're, they're saying that well, because the South stood for something yeah, that they well, didn't agree with. Not only, Mike, well, I'm sure you know this, but the fucking North had slaves too. Yes. It was a whole, it, 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 it wasn't just like, okay, slavery starts here. Yeah, they were free when you went north, but were they really free? No. Were they really treated equally? No. No, they weren't. weren't. So you would look at maybe the American flag and say the same thing? Well, a lot of people do. Like, you have a lot of people who feel uh, the American flag is a, a racist symbol. It's not. See, we're changing all the time. You, we. That's what makes this country great, is we can have the ability to say, okay, yeah, there was some fucked up shit that happened. We're not perfect, but we're going to... We're going to work hard. We're going to get into office or whatever you want to do. And we're going to change this shit. Right. And we have the ability to change it. And the, the America of today is vastly different of the America of the 1910s, 1920s. Yeah. Even if from the 1970s. But now, do you look at... Are like, some of those changes... Do I think I agree with... I don't agree with all those you changes. Think you can do this shit in North Korea? Hell no. China? China? No. no. Russia? Russia? Even Great Britain. Great Britain... Who everybody says, oh, we should be more like Europe. Well, Great Britain controls all their media. Like, BBC is controlled by the government. Like, they're told what they're allowed to say and what they're not allowed to say. I think to an extent that happens here as well. 
I think you have people in the media, but still they who control me- the you- media with their opinion. Like, so they want to push a certain opinion and they push it. Right. I think it all comes down to dollars and cents. But, you know, it's not like we're some but you know what? That can't, leadership that you can't, like. It, it can't be all dollars and cents because just, just MSNBC. MSNBC has very low ratings. But yet they're still very well funded. And then you have a place like Fox News who's making millions and millions of dollars because their ratings are so much higher than everybody else's. Do does that mean I agree with Fox News all the time? No, I don't even I don't watch the news, period. Because I can't stand listening to any of them. Yeah. They're all slanted. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, we have the ability to if we don't like something, we can change it. Right. If enough people get behind, see, but but the, this is this is this is where the cancel culture comes from. They try to get enough people behind everything by stigmatizing and and basically saying, "Hey, if you agree with them, you're a racist too. Do you really want to be a racist, right. or do you want things our way?" Right. Which is what they do. And like, I just I so I, they're trying to they're trying to in, invoke change. Now listen, I I don't know much about. The, like the civil rights movement and everything like that. I know, you know, the gist of it. And I would like to know more about it and get like actually read more into like uh, MLK and stuff. But I just look at it this way. Like that motherfucker wasn't a, wasn't a pussy. No. Like he was probably put down. He went through segregation, all that stuff. But he said, I, no, I'm standing up for what I believe in. And he rallied people with like-minded people, and he took it to the streets. Yeah, and I mean that's peacefully, that's, peacefully. That's awesome. I mean that uh, it wasn't like Antifa with the mask on, you know. Yeah, I'm going to hide behind this mask, but I want you to do what I think. Right. And if so, you don't, I'm going to hit you with a baseball bat. I just because <laughs> I'm I'm a brave and powerful person. I, I wish I wish we could have somebody down here like. With that great of a mind, to like just pick his brain and like, what what do you think about what like what's going on between? Why is there such a divide between cancel culture? Like, what's the problem? Like racism, you know, and all this shit. Like, what do you think? Because I'm stupid. I can't. I don't know. I, I only know what I know how I was raised, and well, we know common sense. Yeah, that there's this right and wrong. And there are gray areas as well. Yeah. And uh, the cancel culture doesn't see gray. They only see right and wrong. Do you remember the show Bosom Buddies? Oh, I love that show. I did too. But actually, I don't think they'd have a problem making that show today. <clears throat> I think it would be more hardcore than it was. <laughs> With South Park, 26 seasons of offending people. Benny Hill. Do you ever watch Benny Hill? Uh, absolutely. I used to watch Benny Hill all the time. And, and that was controlled by the BBC, which is controlled by their government. So, But they showed boobies and everything on, on Benny Hill. That's why I watched it when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I got to see boobies. I, I don't know. There's just, there's, I feel like there's just so much more shit that we need to be focusing on other than do we really care that a manhole is called a manhole i i don't a a gas cock is called a gas cock but what about a nipple a a nipple we're told at work we can't call it a nipple why don't you tell a a nipple is a threaded pipe end so but the, the industry calls it a nipple yeah and and they just so happen to be for like gas lines gas lines and then it's a black nipple. Yeah. I love me some black nipples. I do too. I take two big old juicy black nipples nipples right now. Some nickels? <laughs> some nickel nipples? Just saying. But so like the the edict where we work is that that term is not to be used because it's offense. Somebody in purchasing found it offensive. Well, F you. 
one person found it offensive, and now everybody's got to change for one person. I think we all need to rise above. How about you buck it up? You buck up and, and just accept it and move on. I All think right. it's offensive that I'm. I have to work every day. Uh, I'm. I, I'm lost for words. Honestly, when I think about this whole situation, it's frustrating. It's frustrating, and I feel like a bit of like my youth and my growing up is being taken away from me and taken away from my my kid. It's like. She's like, oh, you can't, like, what would you say, like, when you sit Indian style? Oh, you can't say that no more. No, it's crisscross applesauce. Crisscross applesauce. I'm like, what the, f-? I, it was the first time I heard it, I said, what, what did you say? Chris, it's called crisscross applesauce. No, it's Indian style. And I'm like, or you can't say like, Indian giver. Don't be an Indian giver. So, if, if, if I said something like that, and you happen to be Native American, and you said, Mike, I really don't like that, you know what? I wouldn't say it to you anymore. Right. But the, the problem is, is the, the people who are offended by these things are offended for other people. They're not offended because yeah. it affects them. The people that yeah, it affects, right, yeah. they don't say anything about it. Like, oh, whatever. It, it well, does, wasn't that, that was that whole thing where, where they asked, like, the Native American culture, like, what do you think about the Washington Redskins? They're like, hmm, I don't give a don't shit. Don't give a shit. Call yourself whatever you want. Like, you guys gave us fucking blankets with smallpox on it back in the day. You think calling us <laughs> the <laughs> call football team, the Redskins, Redskins is, is that offensive? Gonna hurt us? Uh, how about this? For the next 50 years, we'll call them the Pale Faces. <laughs> yeah, call it, me a pilgrim. I don't it, give a shit. It'll be the Washington <laughs> Pale Face. <laughs> yeah. The Red Feathers. I don't know. What the? See, the, the thing is, is we were brought up in a time when we could drink from a hose or walk by a table at five years old and grab our dad's beer and take a sip. Yeah. Or what's the first thing when you, when you, when you walked in the, when you took your step into the corrections world, I'm sure you weren't called your last name or whatever. You got, you got a nickname. Or when you went into the Navy. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the Navy, my nickname was Doc. Okay. Cause it was, yeah, I get it. But, you like, know, like people who knew me from high school and from 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 that time, everybody calls me Doc. Big Mike. Big Mike didn't happen until I got Little Johnny. Little John. Or Dick Sucker, either one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ball breath. Hey, hey neck breath. But What's that up, was buddy? like when I look at Marty. You know that that was like uh, that was. That's how you did it. Well, Marty was bust balls. Marty, Marty was saggy balls. Yeah, <laughs> fucking callous nuts dragging on the fucking. <laughs> but he, that's that was like his growing up in the seventies and shit. And that's how you did it, man. You, you know, busted balls. Like in Israel, every person who grows up in Israel has to serve in the military in some. Yes. For for one tour. I just thought of a movie. Everybody, Gran who, Torino. I never saw it. Shut the fuck up. I will not. Dude, I will punch you in the throat right <laughs> okay, now. Okay, that wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> you ha- you Tonight, you have to watch Grant. You'll love it. That's uh, um, so we said Clint Eastwood, right? It, yeah, it couldn't be made today, but it was. And it's definitely... Yeah, it like, was made 20 years ago. Him. When was Grant Trainer made? I don't know, but the one that I know of was the, the one in like the 2000s. 2015 or some shit. But he uses every uh oh fuck. He uses every derogatory term in the book. Oh yeah. 2008. So 16 years ago. Wow. 16 years ago. I think that might kind of, even though he was using derogatory terms, he he befriended his Asian neighbors, and he's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not being racist to you. I just the other <laughs> rickshaw drivers. Like, listen, if you want, you can call me whatever you want. I I have a thick skin. But I, the thing is, is 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 you are like me, 
you do not give someone else that much power. Like I think it's funny when if you the, the more offensive you can call me something, the funnier I think it is. Look, honestly, we sit here every weekend. Like, but you guys were busting my balls last week when we were doing trash, and you're like, "Is there any boss, any supervisor out here need their dick sucked?" <laughs> I was on a fucking floor rolling. That's, I was what, like, that's what I was saying. My ass off. You and me sit here every Saturday, and I call you gay, and you call joke about fat. it. We call each other fat, and we go upstairs and we we stuff our faces and drink some beer, and yeah. we don't we don't touch each other's peepees or nothing like that. <laughs> but but like, and, it's all good fun. It's, if, it's, if you if it you said the air, it, it makes it interesting. If we got off if we got off of here, and 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 the fact, folks. I'm going to be straight up. The way we are here, that's the way we are. Yeah. We we ain't no fact, different here. The better we can bust balls and piss you off, that's our goal. Like, yeah. like, like to have fun, but... And bust us back, because yeah, it, it is what it is. And sometimes sometimes we get upset because we get like, we, we get the feels the one day. Well, you got the feels when I yelled at you. <laughs> oh, I did. I don't know what it was. I usually wouldn't, but... I, 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 th- I thought you were just... Being a dick, <laughs> I thought you were being somebody else, and I didn't mean to snap at you like that. But and I didn't even think of it as snapping at you, but you kind of got the feels <laughs> a little bit. It's okay. But like, listen, we, we. But if you if we got off the air here and you're like Mike, it really fucking bothers me when you say I suck dick. All right, I'll try <laughs> not to say. See, I would never say that because it would come back at me twofold. Uh, well, it's like throwing blood in the shark tank. Yeah, but I, legitimately on the on the podcast, I would try to say I wouldn't say that anymore. I'd try. I'm not saying it wouldn't happen because I'd be lying. But I'm just I saying try. I think this fucking nation has been nutted, and. It needs a fucking thick skin. Without getting political, I blame the single parent family. I don't even blame that because well, because mothers want their sons to be so much more sensitive, so they teach them to be sensitive and think about everybody's feelings before you say something. Well, you know what? Fuck your feelings. Yeah, but then uh, and you know, fuck my I, feelings. I feel fuck like my feelings. A lot of a lot of kids nowadays are gonna get a disservice to them because when you hit the real world, somebody says fuck your feelings. Yeah. <gasps> You're not gonna what? know what to do. What did you say to me? Yeah. I don't know. What am I gonna do? If you run into like some old head like us or somebody who's raised like us, and but look, and, and I'm when we say we're raised like us, we weren't raised horribly. No, I was raised in a single parent family until I was nine or ten, and then I had a stepfather who was an absolute piece of shit. I was just raised not to be a pussy. Right, I was I was raised not to be like my grandfather. If you got a problem with another kid down the street, you go fight the kid. Right, take care of it. See, my grandfather taught me a couple things, and my grandfather passed away when I was sixteen. He taught me anything you do is worth doing right. You're not doing it for someone else; you're doing it for you. Yeah. So if, like, when I was in the navy, if they said go clean a head, I cleaned that head with the cleanest head in the world, it was the cleanest bathroom in the world. You know why? I didn't do it for anybody else because I was going to take a dump there. I wanted to clean. If I was told, if I'm told to go do something, I do it the best of my ability. And I don't do it for John. I don't do it for the boss. I do it for me because I want to have pride in what I do. My grandfather also taught me. Except for when you brewed that beer last time. Yeah, that was horrible, bro. I don't know who you were brewing that for. You know, see, see, and I just want to. You know, pause the, the the show for a second. It's hurtful when you keep bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it happens. Like I fucked up. I I did something wrong. It came out bad. It's still in there. We could try it. <laughs> I just drank one the other night. If you feel like vomiting, we'll try again. That wasn't that bad. Um, but he also taught me to be respectful to other people around me. Like, there's a time to be serious, and there's a time not to be. Like. I can be resp- I can be respectful without worrying about if your feelings are going to get hurt. If someone says to me, "Hey, Mike, that really bothers me," it really bothers me when you call me fat. I won't call you fat yeah, anymore. You're no fun. All right, you're not fun. You're not funny. But and you are fat, but I won't call you fat anymore. Like, what do you want to talk about? Are you going to stop being fat if I don't call you fat? 
anyway, but the, my grand that like that's how I was brought up. We were raised properly. We were raised to be respectful, but the environment we work in is not conducive to people worrying about your feelings. And and yes, maybe that dulls our our political correctness some. You know who I'd like to have on here right now, the Ohio podcast. I'd love to sit and talk to those guys. See how they feel about this. Yeah. Be- I feel like we got to revisit this subject because they they worked in a jail, both of them. Not for I don't think for very long, but they're also um, like when I listen to them, they don't stand in the same space we do all the time. Like we're not a a. Hundred percent like mindset as them, and, and that's okay. I hundred percent respect anybody else's opinion. I just don't agree with it, but I don't have to agree with to respect it. And and that's what this cancel culture is about. If if you make a movie that like <laughs> they make a big deal about having someone play an Indian, a Hindu Indian, not a American Indian, that is not of Indian descent. Well, it's called fucking acting. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what you're doing. Well, get this. Back, uh, being a guy at work was just talking about this. Uh, I, when the hell did, um, the, what the fuck was that David Carradine show? Kung Fu. Kung Fu. Well, I love Bruce, that they redid Lee. it. They just, it's on now again. It's yeah, redone. Oh, God. Well, Bruce Lee, we can watch an episode where we eat. Bruce Lee was originally, yes. He came up with the idea for the show supposed to do that role, and they told him he was too Asian. Yeah, you're too Asian. How are you too Asian? So they had David Carradine do it. Who's not even remotely Asian. Yeah. And he has a lisp. Had a lisp. Although, I love the show. I watched it. <clears throat> but, yeah. And now they redid the show, and the the Wanderer is a female, I think. So they had to make it politically correct. Yeah. So they couldn't make the show the way it used to be made. And the old, uh, Kung Fu is a perfect example of, of a show they could not make the way it was. Because there was uh, racism against blacks and Chinese and Irish in, in that, that that show. Uh, they they talked down the, the Asians all the time. All they did was own opium dens. <laughs> right, yeah. They did nothing else but do that and work on the railroad. Which basically, the uh, the black people at the time were okay with because at least they weren't working on railroads. It was the Chinese, and they didn't want to work with the Chinese. Nobody wanted to work with the Irish. And heaven forbid you were fucking German. Like I just I I look at it this way. Like I think of myself if I went to work and I was getting my balls, but let me say my. My boss was an Asian guy, or, or or somebody I worked with was an Asian guy. He's busting my balls or something. We don't work with an Asian people. And I'm like, listen here, you opium dem <laughs> owning motherfucker. <laughs> like that kind of like breaks the breaks the ice, and like they look. I, I like you, motherfucker. You're yeah. funny. Yeah. But see, that mindset doesn't exist anymore, and that's a shame. Yeah. Like, like the movie The Godfather. Uh, the Italian American Civil Rights League was up in arms about the movie Godfather because it it pictated, and this is 1972. It, it pictated all Italian Americans as as mafia people, <laughs> which they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Who are you fooling? But either that, that or you work in construction. One of the greatest movie franchises of all times was the Godfather franchise. And I actually thought the first one was very boring when I watched it. The second one was much better. Yeah. Up on two. I, I liked the first one. I, I liked it. Now now I appreciate it much more. If they tried to remake it, I don't know. Now I think this goes back to like... As much as I hate remakes, and we've talked about this, I did tape the new Kung Fu. Because I want to see what they did. I finally figured out remakes. Remakes are meant for... The next generation. Yeah, to correct all the problems. Well, if they don't correct all the... Uh, I would say without even correcting all the problems, because it's... It, 
like I said, like Tombstone. I was like, I know Tombstone is those characters. I love that movie. I won't watch a new one. No, I wouldn't either. I'm like, but there's another. There's another. But think about the old guy that that watched it the first time and was like, I love that movie. And then now this one. Well, the the show The Equalizer. Now this goes back to our, our our previous episode about Hollywood sucks. The show The Equalizer. Remember that one? You were younger. Robert McCall. Uh, uh, he was ex CIA, and kind of people would come to him. Now they did the movie with um, that in the show. It was uh, I forget who played him, but it was an older white dude. In the movie, it was um. That was his name. The black guy who's an actor. <laughs> well, that narrows it down. Richard Pryor. No, not that one. The other black guy that was an actor. Oh, you lost me. Uh, what the hell is this? Equalizer. Name? I don't think I ever saw this. Maybe if I did, it was I was really young. I don't really remember it. The hell, I, I, I'm horrible with names. Oh, they, well, I guess they remade that. Is that what you said? It's a TV show now. Uh, what's her face? Uh, the rapper singer. Beyonce. No. Kardashian. The heavy girl. Adele. No. Her. Oh, 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 I love her. Uh, I do too. Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. Yeah, Queen Latifah. Um, him. Oh, Denzel? Denzel Washington. I couldn't think of his fucking name. My sister can't stand his movies. I love his movies. She goes, God, she's like, he guarantees something in every movie. And if you well, look up, if you look up Denzel guarantees, there's like a whole like ten minute clip of him guarantees. Right. It's also like uh, the other guy with motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, why can't I not think of names today? I know. And names. it's just black people's names I can't think of, and that that's racist of me. Yeah. Oh. Denzel. It was uh, not Morgan Freeman. No, I love him, and every movie he's in, I I've loved. She was in Shaft. Yeah. Ah. Uh... Bad motherfucker. Bad motherfucker. Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, there we Jesus go. Jesus Christ. There we go. I love Samuel L. Jackson. He's been in some of my favorite movies of <laughs> all time. He's doing credit card commercials and shit now. Yeah, that's okay. What's in your wallet, <laughs> motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. But that's, like, if you look up motherfucker and Samuel L. Jackson, you get the same thing. You get a list of... Yeah, my sister always... <laughs> Now I I just watched Training Day the other day. Oh, and uh, I don't know if that was you. Like, I would have been out of that car, like so. Like he was so shady in that movie. If that was me, no. If if you were in that, if you were the white cop, like that stereotypical like good guy. Oh, he's like, why are you here for this job? He's like, well, I want to save lives and help our community. He's like, get the fuck out of my car. <laughs> he's like, get out. Yeah, but. Uh... Uh, Denzel was a piece of shit in that movie. Oh, he totally was. Well, he he had his he had his nuts in the ringer. If I had a partner like that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I couldn't do that. I would have been out of that car in a heartbeat because he was so fucking shady. So, take a second, subscribe, hit the thumbs up. If you want to hit the notification bell, you go ahead and do that. If not, I'm okay with that. But if you subscribe and hit the thumbs up, that helps us out a lot. If you're listening to us on iTunes, give us a like and uh, leave a review. If you think we suck, tell us we suck, but make it a five-star you suck. Because that's the only thing that helps. We're back. Yay. So, I think we've beat this horse to death. Not yet. Not even close. But There's we haven't talked a whole lot about movies. We haven't talked a whole lot about TV shows. We've talked a whole lot about the cancel culture of America. Yeah, we kind of went off on a tangent. There. We did. And, and, and that's okay, because that's what we do. 
That's what we do. I would have loved to have Lexi here for this because, you know, you know, I have. Well, then we should probably do a 2.0. I have the Gen X um, point of view. You kind of have the late Gen X point of view. You're still Gen X, aren't you? I don't know. I've seen things where I am. I'm not. I don't fucking tell. And Who's Lexi, after Gen X? I'm not right down with anyway. I don't know. I know Lex, Lex is considered a millennial, but I don't think she's a typical millennial. We like we make a joke about it, but she's not. Yeah. So we have that point of view. I, I'd love to have her point of view in, in in all this. So maybe we we do a a short sidebar when she's here. Unfortunately, she had to work today. But we've taken on a lot. Yeah. Today. So we're going to retire for this episode, and we're going to ask you to go on and take out. The world. <laughs> Take out the world? Take on the world. Take it on. Take it on, baby. Hold on, stop. Welcome back to the shit show 2.0. Okay, boomer. Damn millennials. Wow. <laughs> Did not know that. Even flirters who who are obviously mentally ill. Oh, this is going to go downhill real quick.